Welcome back, everyone, to Let's Talk About Sleep, where we talk about sleep. The link is in the description box down below. So, uh, good to talk to you all again. What we're going to talk about today is one of my personal interests, REM sleep, rapid eye movement sleep. Now, there's a lot we can go about on about this, and I'll make other videos about it, but what I want to talk about specifically today is what happens when we have sleep apnea in REM sleep. Okay, so let's let's take a step back for a minute. What is REM sleep? So rapid eye movement sleep. What happens is you may have heard people say we have 90 minute sleep cycles. Okay, what that what that means is that basically once we've fallen asleep every 90 minutes or so, our brain cycles through non-REM. Okay, so the naming here is not very creative non-REM, and then you end that cycle with a period of REM, okay? So every 90 minutes or so, what happens is our brain goes through the different stages, end with a period of REM, and then our brain goes into lighter sleep where we wake up, go back to sleep, and then another cycle. And we have about four or five of these cycles over the course of a night. And what happens is the time we spend in REM gets longer and longer and longer as the night goes along. So typically what will happen is at the end of the night, we'll spend more time in, in REM sleep. Okay, and in a normal situation, we may wake up out of our dream because REM sleep has happened and then boom, we, we wake up. Okay, so when it comes to sleep apnea, it's very important to talk about REM because what happens in REM sleep is, so we have rapid eye movements, right? So if you actually saw somebody sleeping, if you kind of creepy to do this but if you watch them sleep with their eyes closed you may see the eyes darting back and forth those are rapid eye movements okay and typically they're in dream sleep at that time okay so what happens is during REM sleep we actually dream throughout the night but our, our dreams in REM tend to be more emotionally charged they tend to be more um, action oriented okay we tend to remember them all right but we do tend to dream in other stages but the ones in REM are the, really what we're talking about when we say dream sleep Okay, so nature, Mother Nature, in her infinite wisdom, has provided us to not be able to act out our dreams. Okay, and there is another condition called REM behavior disorder, which I'll make another video about at some point, uh, which is actually my area of research interest. But what happens in a normal circumstance during REM sleep, our body is totally paralyzed. Okay, our body is totally paralyzed except for. The eye muscles, okay? The eye muscles and a couple of other things. Um, the diaphragm being, being one of them, okay? And actually in the inner ear, the stapedius muscle, that also is not paralyzed. But that's more of a trivia question. So our eyes are darting back and forth. We're able to breathe, okay? Everything else is paralyzed, all right? Now, why did God do this? Why did Mother Nature do this? Why did the universe do this? Why did whoever do this? Well, the reason is we don't want to act out our dreams, right? If you think about things from an evolutionary perspective, right? If our ancestors 30,000 years ago were dreaming about fighting someone off and then they ended up, you know, either acting out that dream and falling off a cliff or acting out their dream and uh, getting the attention of a predator, right? That would not be a good thing. So the point is we're paralyzed during REM sleep. So what happens is when we talk about sleep apnea, we said that, that when the airway is relaxed, right, when we go into normal sleep, the airway is relaxed, that causes the airway closure to occur. Okay, fine. In REM sleep, that's another level further. Okay, so the muscles, the airway muscles are not just relaxed, they're now paralyzed. So what happens is if, if you know, when we're awake talking to each other, our muscles are like this, holding the airway open, in normal non-REM sleep, they become floppy. In REM sleep, they become paralyzed. So there's a much higher chance that the airway is going to close off. Make sense? So what happens is sometimes actually people, not sometimes, many times, people will have, let's say, a whatever, mild to moderate case of sleep apnea in non-REM sleep. Then they get into REM and it becomes very severe. Okay, And, and their oxygen levels dip down and they have a much more profound case of sleep apnea. And they have this every, you know, 90 minutes or so. So the problem with that is several fold. One is these patients will oftentimes tell you, you know, I don't really dream. I haven't dreamed in years. Okay. And we put them on CPAP and now all of a sudden they say, wow, my dreams have come back full force. I've never, I never remember dreaming this way before because now they're able to stay in REM sleep. Okay. Now, what are the, the 
the chronic problems with with getting your REM sleep constantly interrupted. Well, you know, it may be maybe memory problems, maybe other uh, neurologic issues down the road. Okay, getting REM sleep is definitely necessary for the brain to function to function well. Okay, so we definitely need our REM sleep, um, and. When somebody has REM-related sleep apnea, you want to treat that. And you treat it the same way you do any kind of sleep apnea, which is with CPAP or oral device or surgery or whatever it is. Um, REM-related apnea, though, is can be can be definitely helped by, by an APAP machine, which I talked about in the last video, which is the pressure will go up, right, if there's more apnea is happening. So in a case like this, we're describing, right, let's say somebody normally has very mild case of sleep apnea during the non-REM stages of sleep, when they go into REM and they start having all these stoppages of breathing, the auto machine, the auto adjusting machine will, will count for that and the pressure will go up. Okay. And that'll keep the airway open. Okay. Just something to think about. Yeah. So, so this is, this is what, what happens and why REM sleep is so important when we talk about sleep apnea. I mean, REM sleep, I said, is important for a lot of different reasons, but when we talk about sleep apnea in this sleep apnea series, uh, that becomes becomes much more of, a, of an issue. So something to think about. Again, these videos are for educational purposes only, so if this, uh, this sparks an idea in your mind, definitely talk to your provider about this. Uh, if there is any possibility you may have sleep apnea or some other sleep condition, go get tested. Go find out, okay? The sleep tests really are not that big of a deal these days and most insurances will cover them, okay? And as always, if you like this video, please click like. Please subscribe to the channel. We'll try and get to a 1,000, okay? Once we do, some lucky viewer will get a signed copy of Let's Talk About Sleep. Maybe not this one, but some other some other version of it. Um, and, uh, and until next time, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below or on, the, on social media. And until then... Sleep well.